Bama Online Senior Analyst Travis Ryer alongside Bama Online Site Publisher Tim Watts, and we're going to talk some recruiting with Tim Watts. So, Tim, this Alabama 2024 recruiting class currently sitting with 20 commitments headlined by a couple of five stars in Julian Sand, the number one quarterback prospect for the 2024 cycle. Also, Jalen Mbakwe, the outstanding athlete who garners five stars as well. What is this one area of this class, Tim, in your opinion, that maybe still has the most work to do, whether that's positionally, whether that's best player available? Yeah, I think it's the defensive line. I think they did a good job across the board. They have a couple of nice defensive linemen that I'm fans of committed, but they've still got room for a couple more guys. And you see them after some big name guys like David Stone. You know, the problem with recruiting defensive linemen is are they are as much in demand as any position. Um, when it comes to recruiting, you know, NIL factors in, and they are at the very top of the heap there as well. A lot of them are committed early. I mean, in Alabama likes David Stone, who's committed, and Daylon Evans, who's committed. Those are guys committed to other schools that they've been recruiting. Um, our favorite, Steve, up in Canada, if you want to say his last name, feel free, but the, the Canadian guy who tore it up in Alabama's camp. So defensive line is the place that have got the most room uh, to grow and add some players. What is the uh, one area where you feel like they're done uh, this class other than quarterback was yeah. saying, obviously, but if we went beyond quarterback, where would you look and say, I, I think they're pretty well set with what they have right now. I mean, it's got to be tight end, right? They went out, they got Jay Lindsay flipped him for Mississippi state, sort of that inline guy, you know, and you say inline, I don't want to be insulting. Like he can't catch the ball. He's a heck of an athlete. Uh, plays a lot of sports, just a big guy. Doesn't play at a high level of football, but he's a dominating kind of kind of athlete who went to camp, blew Alabama away. They loved him. He had been committed to Mississippi State for a few months. Lifelong Alabama fan, uh, fan who they flipped. And then, of course, Caleb Odom. You know, you can look at him, and he's kind of that modern tight end where he's almost a wide receiver. Um, he's that guy that can stretch all over the field, can play anywhere. Uh, has good size, has good speed for his position, and catches the ball really well. So tight end, I think they're A plus right now. I can't imagine them adding another guy. Plus, it's, you know, tight ends are hard to find. I mean, you look at, you know, you see what George has done with theirs, and everybody wants to do that, but there's just not that many. So when you can get two to complete exactly what you want at that position, you've done a really good job. And I think Alabama did that. Seems like if Alabama fans like what they're getting from Amari Nyblack right now. They're really going to love Caleb Odom, I would think, in time. And you said it, Jay Lindsay, more of that guy that can give them some Robbie Oots, some C.J. Dupree, some Danny Lewis at the position. Uh, it is a pairing that complements one another quite well, it would seem. So what is this area, of this class, though, Tim, that you could still envision the most change between now and that early signing date? I mean, I think it goes back when you look – at this class, A to Z, quarterback to to special teams almost. They've got a good little a sample size of everything. Now, again, we go back to the defensive linemen where they still have room for two. Um, I think that's where it can change the most because there's a lot of uh, guys in play. They've got a couple spots left, so there's a lot of guys in place trying to fill those. But, again, committed to other schools, taking visits, um, Everything that goes along with that and that late signing period. Now you got to factor in not only the the early signing period is coming, but you got to factor in the NIO, the visits, the unofficial, the official, everything that's going on behind the scenes. And Alabama's did really well at keeping stuff low key, quiet, and secretly recruiting somebody. I mean, we talked about Greg McElroy, although it was Shula, we talked about the Greg McElroy commitment a few, you know, back in the Tebow era, that still happens now. People are recruiting kids, don't shut the door, they commit early, they don't take visits, they go to a game, they build relationships. All that stuff is still happening. So I would guess Alabama's got several several guys that they're, they're working and it just hasn't really got out publicly yet. You see Alabama currently ranked, I believe, fifth in the uh, on three industry rankings. Uh, is there a ceiling for this class, Tim, in your opinion, where it can move up and say, to the top three because as you know alabama fans at this point they're expecting a top yeah. one top two class on an annual basis man i just don't think this class was going to be big numbers wise i think there's a couple of reasons for that first of all this recruiting class nationally is not very good if you compare it to last year's group and 
look at next year's group, 23 and 25 were much stronger from a, you know, from the top to the bottom. So I don't think they went in, you know, I think they went in knowing that they might have to portal some guys and not just Alabama. I think a lot of schools have sort of taken that approach, but Alabama's hit on a high percentage of their top targets and like knee positions. I mean, they, they needed a big time quarterback and they got one. They needed a big time tight end. They got one same for quarterback, cornerback, all those positions, offensive linemen. They've done a, really good job of getting the interior guys to complement the exterior guys from last year. So, um, yeah, I think when all said and done, this wasn't going to be a big class, and that always affects your numbers. Also, you're on the heels of last year's class, which was big, had portal guys, and was, you know, one of the best classes ever on paper. So I think we're probably looking, you know, top five, top three. It depends. They still have big-name guys out there like offensive tackle Jordan Seaton, who's probably the number one tackle in the country, in my opinion. Uh, how they close on the defensive line, make sure they keep all the guys they've got committed, which is always obviously super important. And they still want to add a running back in this class, I think. So Daniel Hill's a guy that's that's out there and a few others that uh, are committed to other schools that they're looking at. You know what can uh, make fans feel a lot better? And look, you're still talking about a top five class. But when you've got the nation's number one ranked quarterback prospect for that cycle, in the bank already, and Julian saying uh, that seems to cover for a lot. I would think, Tim. Yeah, I think if you get that guy, you get him early. I mean, and he's a guy who's already ranked really high, but his stock's only increased. I mean, he's played really well. I think he was out this week with an injury, but he's played really well. There's a lot of talent uh, with that kind of guy. He's got that California vibe that you want, that number one ranking. We know those guys, it's going to be a good wide receiver class, but we also know those guys can really pay off down the road with next year's class, knowing that Julian Sayan is on campus because he is a big name. And a lot of these guys see him in a national seven on seven. These kids follow the rankings, the underclassmen, they know who the, who the, who the big name guys are. So I think Julian, not only from a talent standpoint, I think reputation wise, he'll help Alabama when they're recruiting. A big name you need to follow throughout the recruiting process. This guy right here, Tim Watts with us at BamaOnline.com for more coverage of all things Crimson Tide. Stick with us at BOL. Tim, thanks a lot, my man. Appreciate it, man.